Yes. So again, I want to apologize for that little bit of a technical difficulty there. I think we're all back in. And Dr. Manning, if you will continue, please. All right, guys. You know things happen when we're doing with technology. Um, everybody has glitches from now time to time. All right. So just so you're aware, in Florida, there is a large population of nurses. There's over 300,000 nurses, and I've sent out surveys for. Okay, I'm sorry, my audio is also. Mm -mm. All right, so just so you're aware, there's over three, uh, 300,000 nurses in Florida. And I've sent out over almost 10,000 surveys to nurses and I had to go through all those surveys. But we had um, a good amount of nurse responded. In fact, it was 205 that completed the study. So you're gonna be seeing information listed on your screen shortly about the result of the study. But I wanna go through just a few more um, literature reviews that we um, interrogated, that I interrogated, okay? For instance, there was one literature that I looked at in 2017, and it was a four-phase selection method of burnout of nurses. And it showed that one third of the nurses um, in the ER was suffering from emotional exhaustion. Now, remember, the ER is where you're supposed to have, um, you know, your first line when patients are sick, but yet the people caring for the sick is also burned out. Um, another study showed that 87% of the nurses studied report, reported feeling burnout, you know, also displayed by low quality of life. And a convenience sampling done in, in um, 2016 of OB nurses show 75%. These were married women. Because you know, sometimes when, when you're looking through um, suicide rates, they usually say people who are not married have higher risk. Well, guess what? This was OB nurses that was married. And yet 75% of them said that they were burned out as well. And burnout affect turnover rate really bad because I told you there was four, we, we, um, we need nurses, but yet when you look at the rate of burnout of nurses, there's over 400,000 nurses need, we need right now, we short nurses. And every time we get nurses in, they're quitting because it's just the, the profession is so stressful. So therefore, even though the schools are getting out nurses, turning them over and they're passing the boards, we cannot keep up because as, as soon as they come in, the sooner they go in. Um, call outs range between 35 to 40%. 35% of um, the nurses who leave in um, calling out of work is due to burnout. There's, there are countries, I told you, like China, right? The 40, 41%. And 70% for the Palestinian nurses are burnout. So this is something that we need to really pay close attention to. We can't ignore this um, because burnout is studied. I mean, how many of you knew that burnout can lead to PTSD? Well, I know burnout was an issue, but until this study, this research, I didn't know that burnout can lead to PTSD, right? Chronic medical issues. But when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Chronic medical issues can occur due, into bur due to burnout. So you saw in the video some interventions to practice, but one of the interventions that I did not discuss was this study that was done. Um, and with this study, it was a one day mindfulness activity that was used to lies for the interventions of these nurses. And, uh, the study showed that for every 12 hours of a nurse work, they should be given two days off. Now, we work three 12 hour shifts mostly. And imagine if they were to give you two days off for every 12 hours. That's just not practical, right? That's not going to happen. So, therefore, you have to do it for yourself. You have to apply these interventions in your life to reduce your chances of becoming 
um, burnout. So this was the, um, an evidence-based model selected and it's Vandora's social cognitive theory. One of the main thing that I took from this theory and the reason why I selected it was because it, as your personal life and many people that I associate myself with, I've realized that sometimes you have to um, present the perceived threat in order to see them to, to do what you want. Because in my office, I have patients that I've been working with for two years trying to tell them, you are now in pre-diabetic stage. I need you to apply these things in your life. Well, these patients, some of them, they just not doing anything about it because they cannot perceive this threat. So until they are able to perceive a threat of burnout, right? Like the PTSD, um, the chronic medical issues, these things, until they realize that they could commit suicide due to burnout, they may not do anything about it, okay? And that's what this evidence-based model um, helped to determine. Now, on the left of the screen, you will see it say perceived threat of burnout. These are PTSD, suicide, chronic medical issue, independent, um, inadequate patient care, and job abandonment. These are just a few. But on the right, you will see intervention, which include mindfulness, um, yoga um, activities, yoga, massages, guided imageries, meditation. You know, I like to travel. That's one of them. So when, you, when the threat of burnout, these threat meets intervention, resilience will develop. Another factor consists of nurse not working, um, the impact of burnout as a nurse, which is seen as lack of resiliency display in nurses, leading to chronic medical condition, depression, inadequate patient care, high turnover rate, and the list goes on and on of things that can happen. And from this systemic review of article, the common phenomenal studies were the dilemma in supplying and demanding of nurse and the burnout as influenced nurses to leave the profession. And we went over the demographic of the, the population study, but the largest group was the group between the age of 18 to 25. They made up 40% of the population study. And I mentioned that males were um, the least studied, but that's just the population in general of nurses. Most of them was female. And 33% of them had two to three medical illness. And they're working within the last 30 days. Now imagine the nurse caring for patient, but they too have medical issues. This is the result of the first survey, which is the tool that has questions that you did not take. Some of these questions include what percentage of the nurse calling out of work due to burnout? And you can see right here, it's only 25% um, was able to get it correct. How many nurses and physicians commit suicide? Only 23% of them was able to get it correct. Um, is it true or false that the nurse working in home health care, I mean, home health and mental health are at risk for burnout? Most of them knew that this was true, um, which is not a factor of burnout. Um, only 48% knew things that can occur if you're burnout. Um, is it true or false that the Joint Commission listed a burnout? This was one of the highest, 88% knew this was so. Um, which intervention helped to relieve burnout while caring for patient? Only 25% knew that guided imagery can help you to reduce burnout, but yet this is something that we teach patient all the time, right? Um, now, when you did the, you know that questionnaire you did at the beginning, the 25, um, I mean, the 10 questions that you did, you could see the results of my study here. So prior to the video being this, the um, participants seeing the video, you could see the numbers listed here on the pre-intervention section. And then after you could see them over here. Now the ones that you see in the high, higher numbers was meant to be higher. 
because there this is a reverse that done with this tool. So we expect these numbers over here to be higher than it was on, on this side on most of them. On all the category except one, these participants show drastic improvement after watching this video. And to break down the, the um, results a little further of the perceived stress scale, you will see that in blue, you have people who scored low stress level and um, prior to watching the video, and you could see like in the low stress level, there's 35 individuals that said they were having low stress versus after there was only 15. And then in moderate stress level, it was a lot of people was having moderate, moderate stress. Well, it was a matter of fact, 137 of them with moderate stress. But then after watching the video, it went to 57. And well, kudos to the ones that was really stressed out. From 41, it went down to eight. So watching this video that, you know, is just a Dr. quick- Dr. May, uh -huh. just for a second. Um, I don't know, are you using a mic um, near your mouth or something? Cause I can hear a lot of uh, static, it sounds like. Let me see how I could, yeah. I'm gonna have to- just, It just, it just um, you know, distorts some of your words. And so I don't want to get in the full picture. Of what you're saying. Okay, let's see if I could turn this down. Um, oops. And I'll just uh, pause the recording for a second. Okay, how does it sound? All right. Thank you so much. Go ahead. All right. So upon review of the, the results, 80, 80 participants had lower scores in the moderate stress level of the PSS after the video intervention, which is great. This is exactly what we wanted to see. We wanted to test to see if the video was gonna be um, helpful for the nurses so that the interventions, you know, they could utilize it while working. 33% of the participant saw reduced stress level in the highest category and the pre studies show a high level of stress versus a post-study. Performing, performing guided imagery during um, work resulted in the in a lower stress level. So the findings, the pre um, survey determined Floridian nurses had moderate to high levels of stress while working. Recognize the, re, recognizing the perceived threat of burnout and incorporating video interventions confirmed a redu, reduction in nurses' stress level after using guided imagery. And that's exactly what we wanted to um, find out. Um, the med meditation technique and the positive, positive imageries listed in the intervention videos were proven to lower the nurses' um, incidence of burnout during 30 days. And as we mentioned in this, um, this today session, you guys were supposed to be able to determine what is known about burnout. And right now you can walk away from this and you can educate other nurses, other teachers, other students about the um, implication of nurse burnout. Also, you were provided with the intervention and one of the main intervention that you could use is guided imagery. So now you can actually go about your day and know that there is a tool that you can use while working to reduce burnout. Also, we were able to share the results with you of the study. So my recommendation for you is the healthcare facility can now implement video therapy as a reminder to utilize the interventions seen in the video during stressful work days. The Joint Commission or other policymakers should require continuing education using units annually and provide facility training relating to relief and burnout. So in conclusion, work stressors can negatively impact nurses, health and well-being, and the care delivered to patients. Now the policymaker, we are asking, we are urging for them to develop and fund digital-based tools to relieve um, burn workplace stressors and provide mandatory training 
on the implication of burnout in the health industry and the interventions available to relieve the stress. Statistical analysis was performed to evaluate the effect of using the video to deliver the perceived threat and the interventions to lower the chances of burnout. However, more study is needed to implement the changes at a global level. level. And finally, um, my recommend, recommendation for you, the audience today, if you find yourself burnout, please remember your friend, Sam, which is on the screen. Stop and meditate. Burnout not only affect nurses, but it can also affect any profession. Therefore, if you are engaged in prolonged stress, you are at risk for burnout. So guys, I really appreciate you turning out today to hear about the burnout and the implications. I want to thank Dr. Beeman, who has been very instrumental in my life. Um, she's the Dean of Nursing of Aspen University. And as well, I thank all of you guys for joining, even with the um, system cutting down. And you guys log back on. I really appreciate you guys. And now I open it up to all of you for questions. Um, I do want to say why everybody sort of is putting their thoughts together on any questions. And I would encourage everyone, um, you know, why you have Dr. Manning here, who is an expert on this study that she did, um, ask her questions about her study and maybe some of her discoveries. But um, I do want to also, yes, thank everyone for their patience through some of the technical uh, issues that occurred. Um, I believe they mostly were on my end, and so I apologize to Dr. Manning, but as people are presenting, things are popping up on my screen, and as I'm clicking on closing things down, it will sometimes kick me out of Zoom. So I hope during Dr. Manning's presentation, y'all were able to watch her presentation, and it wasn't watching me trying to figure out where stuff was being hidden on my screen. Um, but I do agree that that just showed you, Dr. Mang, that your topic was so interesting that despite being kicked out, everybody wanted to hurry up and log back in. And thank you again for that quick little detour on, on the mic adjustment. Um, a couple of things that jumped out at me. And first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for being so involved in your profession. I mean, right at the beginning when you were talking about the things that you've done and some of the current work that you're doing um, in order to help prepare new nurses and help them pass, you know, the, the, the exams, as well as uh, deal with some of the culture that they may experience and unexpectedly, um, you know, not know how to deal with it uh, when they enter a, a clinical site or a workplace and um, now experience some lateral violence or burnout just in general because it's not always lateral violence that makes people want to leave a job. Um, but that's sometimes as part of it, you know, the way the way things are set up to support each other. So, but, 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 I, I, you know, that in type of, of, of uh, focus is so critical um, as our previous presenter for today also emphasized, but, but again, you're so involved in your work and in your profession that it was just comforting um, to see you really just come straight out of of graduate school and immediately jump into, and you were already starting this before graduate school, but I was very interested in your websites that you've created. So hopefully you can continue to share that information with folks and get them to those sites and help um, you get information to, to develop that even further. But I did find one thing very interesting that you said like burnout is now a medical condition. You know, that, that, that yes. you get, you also get, you know, days off, so to speak for burnout. I can just go in and take a PTO and just label it burnout. Um, I'm not sick or anything else. I just need some, uh, some time off, but you know, you, you describe it as prolonged stress and, and I know at least, and I'm not a medical professional at all, but through my whole life, I've always heard stress equals death, you know, stress. If you're in a prolonged state of stress, um, your health, whether it be mental or emotional or physical, whatever, is going to suffer just because of that environment, that overload of stress. And you even uh, gave, you know, some references that, that um, even in the military and et cetera. So it's like soldiers, you know, many of our nurses may feel like soldiers out there in a war zone 
um, mm -hmm. and that can contribute to their, their stress levels. Um, and I really enjoyed your neat video there. Um, and, and it seems uh, in relation to our first um, session this morning and your session, Dr. Manning, that education and awareness still are the key, that we have to alert people that this is, you know, is it a condition that you may feel and not realize that you're being burnt out, you know, not realize um, that there's also things you can do, um, like Sam, I really like that, just stop and meditate, um, and that guided imagery, you know, uh, being able to focus on being aware that you're burnt out. I think we don't we don't know that we're burnt out and to the point that we're burnt out, you know, and there's many little progressions along the way that if we had stopped and given ourselves some care and have, and had drawn attention to our, our feelings of burnout early, then we might not have gotten to a point to where it, it was debilitating. So anyway, those were some of my observations. Um, and just, again, we're so proud of your work that you did as a doctoral student and the, and the, you know, the contributions to your profession um, that that study has provided to the rest of, of the professionals who um, also study this topic. So um, I, uh, let's move over to the chat maybe and see uh, if there's any questions in there. Can you see the chat or- do I'm you seeing a lot of comments, not okay, questions. <laughs> Dr. Beeman just wrote, actually that is the absence of stress. We will always have stress, but we need to cope with it so it does not overwhelm us. Isn't that a, 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 a really the right way to look Very. at that? It's coping with the stress, which you've talked about too, Dr. Manning, through your you know, yoga and, and massages and those kinds of things. Um, it, it's interesting, most of the things you talked about were even physical solutions to a mental stressor, you know what I mean? And, and that that will build up in our bodies, that stress and then becomes poison and causes unhealthiness. So I like Dr. Beeman's perspective there. Yes, very profound. So any questions, guys? Well, I, I have, um, Go ahead. I, I have a question um, and I just want to start by obviously just complimenting um, Dr. Manning because this is an absolutely appropriate topic and especially in, in what we, we've had to really deal with in the last year on top of everything else just in general. Now, I am not a medical professional at all. I'm actually an attorney. And I thought that this was very insightful even from an attorney perspective because we have so much of this that oftentimes it's not being discussed and, and we see it acting out sort of like what her presentation, Dr. Manny, your presentation highlighted. But here's the question I have for you because I see it. In fact, I have a good friend here in California that talked about working 19 hours um, and she's a nurse. And one of the things that she said was incentivizing to do that, even though it's a regular occurrence for her, is the double time pay. So oftentimes we are incentivized, even as an attorney, to work 60 plus hours a week is normal, but you get incentivized with bonuses. And in the case of, like I, like I said, my friend who talked about the double pay that she made for working 19 hours as a nurse, th th that to me is problematic, right? So you're talking about burnout and obviously the consequences of, but there's needs, there's, there's other issues. And when people are being incentivized, even though there's a health, health issues and things like that, it's driving them. And it would seem like an insane thing, right, um, to do because we probably should be more concerned about our health and not that. So could you speak to that and, and the fact that burnout is in often cases being incentivized? Yes, and I totally agree with what you're saying. The burnout is so, so huge, it's so broad. And uh, there's a lot of other reasons that lead to burnout, not just the fact that they're working um, these 12 hour shifts. And there's a lot of nurses that do not work over time. I do not work more than three hours when I'm working in the hospital, but for the places that's given them incentives to do so, shame on the leaders who are doing it because, but one thing I could tell you is burnout was not really initiated where we are talking about it until recent. So like within the last 10 years, I recall prior to 10 years, there was only about when you search in Google, 
to see how much articles would come up, you may find that it was, let's, I, I don't have the number in front of me, but I had, it was like 60,000 return, right? And now within the last 10 years, it's like 10 times that amount, right? Because now a lot more um, people are burned out or maybe they were, but nobody was really looking at it. But now people are paying more attention to it. You have leaders, now organizations out there that actually doing things about it, which is why like the survey or joint commission and the World Health Organization now are putting labels to it to show that this is significant because there's just way too many people committing suicide. So I feel like eventually they're gonna be doing something about nurses working these long hours and doctors working these long hours like they are because even with police officers, they have similar shifts and it's also, those people are also burned out as well. So I believe as this topic become more pressing in people's face, and they're more accountable. They, they're forcing um, organizations to become more accountable. They're going to be looking at ways to um, reduce their um, incidence of burnout in their, um, say, company. So I think there are going to be more changes to come. And I hope that answered your question. That was a very interesting question. Uh, thank you. Because if you think about it, if if you're burnt out, well, let's have you work more. You know, what I mean, it just sounds counterintuitive. Or those who aren't burnt out, you know, they're having to work for those who are burnt out. And now we burn out those who weren't burnt out yet. You know, so you can see how that can turn into a snowball effect and, and really become a vicious cycle. Um, interesting new feature in Dr. Manning's presentation day two was sort of that teleprompter uh, effect at that, you know, that, that speech to text. So we're going to see um, if that in some ways is more of a distraction or if it's helpful also for folks to be able to, uh, you know, watch what they're also listening to at the same time, which sometimes can help those, um, you know, with, with hearing uh, limitations. So uh, does anyone else have uh, additional questions? We still have, you know, a couple more minutes and you have Dr. Manning here. Uh, anything about um, her study or something you've noticed in your work environment related to burnout and what works and what the challenges are? Uh, sure, sure. Can you guys hear me? My, my name is Karen Chang. I'm a nurse in, uh, in New York. Um, very, very happy, to Dr. Manning, to have been a part of this uh, wonderful presentation. I was thinking as I was going through, as you were going through the information, uh, a thought came to me, you know, how can, how can we really spread this information more among not just nurses, but among hospital administration and, uh, and lawmakers? The reason I ask that question is I believe there is a, a silent epidemic uh, among nurses and healthcare practitioners at this point in time related to burnout and particularly or acutely related to the pandemic, uh, especially for those nurses and practitioners that lived through you know, the last year, uh, beginning in March of last year until now of having to, uh, to, to see and to experience and to work under, under pandemic conditions. I think it's not spoken of as much, but I believe there is definitely a silent uh, epidemic there um, in terms of depression, in terms of burnout, in terms of um, just loss of appetite even for the profession of nursing or for healthcare professions. So how, how you know, in your own words, or, or what would you think would be the best way to be able to get this information into the hands of folks that can make a difference uh, from a, a policy perspective? Excellent, I love that question. When I was doing the, the research study, I was coming up with so many different themes. I would have never finished if I didn't narrow it down to something. But one of the main thing that I saw was leadership, organizational leadership. I believe that companies healthcare facilities need to be accountable because a lot of the leaders are the, the things that we have to do as nurse, nurses working on the floor are, I guess, the same when it comes to other disciplines as well. 
um, I believe is because we have to govern by the rules that were set in place. So I believe now we need to start look at leadership and um, not just so leadership, but also the, the rules that was placed there for us to govern by because we do not go against what the facilities are asking us to do. And if they are requiring us to be working in situation in condition that is going to put us at risk, now they should be methods that is now presented differently to help reduce this. Because this is not the first study that's being done on burnout. But what I encountered was even though we had the study, it's not being translated into practice. So therefore, we'll have this magnitude, this massive amount of studies showing nurses are burnout, physicians are burnout, teachers are burnout, so much people are burnout, but it stays right there in the digital world or in the libraries, but it's not getting inside the organization. It's not getting to the nurses. It's not getting to the people who are really the frontliners. And now we need to get it there, which is where I come in. This is where you come in. This is where all of you on the call come in to start engage with your leaders to say, hey, we need this to occur. Now, one plus that I could tell you is as a healthcare worker for your, you know, Karen, um, you know, the joint commission when they come, that's where even if we never used to do it during off peak when they're not scheduled to come, we find ourselves doing the things that we know is required. So if they make it mandated for us to, including leaders, to go through these training and they find them, or let's say they lose reimbursement or something that could really hurt them in their pocket, people don't like to be hurt in the pocket. So if they mandate this to be something that to be um, real profound in the organization where now you can't cut corners, I think it will make a big difference. And I hope that answered your question. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you. So Dr. Manning, you know, just a follow up question to that. Um, you know, I know you've given this presentation and it's wonderful. Is, are there ways that we can request, uh, you know, or through our organizations have you do uh, something akin to this presentation or an abridged version even, uh, if we can get some leaders together um, virtually? Yes, definitely. I've already been doing some of those. I recently did one with um, a large sorority. Um, when I presented my video on social media, um, they reached out to me and I had 88 attendants. So yes, that's definitely can occur. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Chang, you kind of answered your question there too. Part of the, of the way to make a difference and create change is to hire experts, you know, like Dr. Manning to come in and do some specialized training as tailored to your group. And I think at, and you asking that question probably indicates that you're a leader somehow in your organization. And, and that goes back to your question too, is you know, how, does, how do we create this change? And if leaders are asking these kinds of questions and if leaders are reaching out to the experts to come in and do some professional development, I believe that is where we'll probably get the most traction. But remember this stuff has been, um, had its claws you know, into the, the nursing culture um, for decades. And so it will take time for folks to uh, behave differently. And, and a lot of it is, you know, I kept thinking through this, we talk about the people who are most negatively impacted by this are the new, the newbies who are coming in, right? The folks who already are still there, they kind of made it past it and lived and survived it. And the other folks who didn't are gone. And so it's the churn is in the newbies. You often will notice, you know, in, in work environments um, because they'll get burnt out. But if you give care to the newbies, Exactly. Um, protect them and give them some support. And, and the, 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 the medical thing that kept jumping out at me was, a, a, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And yeah. so if you can put a whole lot of attention up front and prevent these kinds of uh, disease of burnout occurring, then you may somehow be able to uh, make a difference. But again, with, with most medical conditions in general, you're going to have to apply the, the treatment over time and consistently, right? So good conversation. Anything else for Dr. Manning? 
And thank you too, uh, Mr. Chang, for joining us, um, as well as other folks who are all over the country right now. Um, we are coming up on the end of the Q&A. Uh, one last question for the group, anyone? <laughs> All righty. Well, I would say please reach out to Pam, um, follow up with more questions about her study and what she discovered. Um, and at the same time, follow up uh, with her for any additional services that she's able to provide through um, consultation or any specialized uh, training that she can do. So everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, tomorrow, the last day of colloquium week, um, will be on uh, retention in the teaching profession. So we're going to look at this same topic, but we're going to look at it now within the field of education and why do teachers um, within the first three to five years, uh, a huge uh, portion of those leave and exit and go into something different. What, what are the conditions of those environments that may be promoting uh, burnout for them? And what are the similarities that we may hear uh, that's occurring in the nursing um, setting. So very interesting uh, topic, uh, both today and tomorrow, um, but in two different disciplines. You enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and take care. Thank you. Stay safe.